Hi, I'm Patrick Inhofer with MixingLight.com, and in this insight, we're going to continue our series on control surfaces. Today, we're looking at speed rate CC and the tangent element control surface. Now, as we discussed in an earlier video, the tangent element is made up of four panels. One of the things I want you to recognize and kind of notice as I go through this demo is how while there is interaction between a couple of these control surfaces, in other words, I might press the A button on the button panel and then press mask and now I've got masking tools, press the A button on this surface, press look, and now I've got my some color correction tools here on the knobs. But the knobs don't necessarily rely on the button panel because if I were to come in here and just highlight in the mask area, they update. I highlight it in the look area, it updates. So even if I don't have this panel, I still get the functionality of this panel. So this means that you can modularly build up your element, which is a bit of a pricey, you know, at 3,500 bucks, it's not inexpensive, but you can buy this pieces one at a time, one every six months, one every couple jobs, and add to it and slowly build it out. So very quickly, let me show you probably a great example of why it is colorists love control panels in the first place, which is if I press the P button on my keyboard, it hides all my coloring panels. I'll press the A button, and now I've just got this interface, and without doing anything, I can start color grading without using my mouse, without having to be bothered by the clutter of the actual interface itself. And I can come in here and do things like I can kick up my input saturation. I can increase my contrast if I want to. These buttons are, I can push them to detent and reset. So I'll reset my contrast. There we go, got the reset. Let me just very quickly do a base grade. So I'm gonna bring up, adjust my offset just until I get the blacks right around zero. I'll bring up my highlights just until those highlights are just peaking out maybe around 95. Those probably specular kind of highlights there. And now I notice that I've got a bit of an imbalance in my shadows here. My greens are probably a little more lifted than I want. So now what I can do is come into the shadows and limit this offset adjustment just to the shadows. Now I could click on it and do that, but we've got a control surface here. Here on the tangent element in the multi-function panel, I can select between my highlights, midtones, shadows, and overall, on this three-way, giving me a 12-way, I call it a 12-way color corrector. So I'll punch into the shadows here. Now I've got my offset gamma gain. As shown by this little display output, it's showing me offset gamma gain, telling me I'm in my shadows. If I punch into the midtones, it changes to midtone. Punch it to highlight, changes to highlight. So I'll go back into the shadows. Now I'm gonna adjust my offset. The trackball adjustments feel very natural to me. The wheels are very responsive. I can go in in the preferences and adjust the sensitivity if I want to. What I'm going to do is press the A button on the knob and that will turn off the eyeball for this primary layer. This is letting me see what's coming in off a disc and you notice I don't have really any highlights coming in off a disc. I mean the highest highlight I have is around 70 IRE here. So my gain control is having reduced effect because there isn't a lot of stuff living up here in the upper third of the image. So to fix that, I've expanded this out. Now I'm gonna undo this blue push here in this primary layer. I'm just gonna reset my trackball by pressing the dot button for the gain. All right, and now I'm gonna add a new primary layer and guess what, I can do that here on the button panel. I'm gonna add a primary layer now here's a feature I love and I use all the time with the control surface, which is I'm gonna come into the highlights, then I'm gonna hit this B button. This B button kind of pages you through additional sets of controls you have here. So I hit B, I come to a second set of controls and notice I've got this GR color, GR white black, GR CO black, what is that? Well, what that is is the gray out functions. It's a duplication of what's going on in here. So if I pull down gray out and go color gray, it's showing me what is a highlight because I'm in the highlights here. It's showing me what speed gray considers to be a highlight. A better look uh, that I prefer is the white black. So now if I toggle to midtones, there you go. This is what the midtones control will affect. And if I go to shadows, 
This is what the shadow controls will be affecting. And then once I get a look at what I want to see, I can go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to put myself into the highlights. I'm going to push a little bit of blue using some gain and some gamma in the highlights to get me some more blue and maybe a little bit in the offset to push that up even further. What if these corrections that I wanted to do here, I just wanted to do within a mask. So I can press A. This takes me out to the main menu. And the main menu, I've got this mask button. So I'm going to click on mask and now it's giving me my masking tools. I'll press vignette to add a vignette. There's a bit of a bug in here where I don't see my vignette unless I have the panel exposed. So there it is. There's my vignette. I can make that larger. I'm just going to give myself a little more room here. All right. And now I absolutely, this is another feature I really dig. There's two more features that I really dig here in speed grade CC that I think are unique to how speed grade talks with the element. This is one of them. So yeah, I've got this, this knob panel, and yes, I can skew, and yes, I can move these around, and up, down, left, right, do some rotate. What I can't do from this knob panel is feather out this vignette. What the heck is up with that? Well, I can do it using the on-screen widget, and I hate feathering on the on-screen widget. I really do kind of despise it here um, because it takes me so long to get a decent feather. Instead, with the control surface, here's what's really unique about speed grade and the way it works with the element. Notice on the trackball, I've got mask tools. It's no longer color grading tools. It's a masking tool. And I've got feather and move, scale and resize, rotate and move. So each one is for the ring and the ball on each of these. So on the right here, I've got feather and move. So the ring is feather. Look how big a feather I can get and how quickly I can do that. That is awesome. All right, and I can also move it around using the trackball. Love that, very instinctive. On the other side here, I use the rings to rotate, and it also replicates the move. So depending on what I'm doing, I can move and rotate all at once, or I could move and adjust my feathering all at once. All right, that's what that gives me. And now what's really funky is this scale and resize thing. So. All right, so scaling is pretty straightforward, right? I'm just making it larger and smaller here on the middle ring. But now on this joy ball, if I move it straight up and straight down, I've got this weird aspect happening in one direction. I go left to right, and then it's happening in another direction. If I go diagonally one way, it starts like almost like scaling up. I can go in one direction where it scales down, the other diagonal where it scales back. I go diagonally the other direction, start skewing. I have like five or six controls just on this little joy ball right here. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get used to it, it's really freaking fast. And I've got my softness and my rotation controls on the other rings. So it makes this a very fast and easy way to work. Now, the last thing I want to show you is what I think is, it's a small thing, but it's one of my favorite things because it really says a lot about how hard the speed grade team worked to integrate this control surface into to their software. And it has to do with transport. So I just grab this wheel and I start spinning. And at first it, it's, it's moving pretty quick, but then if I slow down, I get very, very fine control. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't overshoot if I don't want it to. Once I kind of attenuate my actions to making small moves to get through this shot like this, Let's go to something here where I've got a grade going on. Now it starts slowing down. It gets, starts getting a little choppier as there's a grade going. And that's to be understandable. But still, I can actually use this. Here's the other thing too is I can limit this. Like right now, let's say I want to move forward a couple frames and then boom, all of a sudden I'm on the next shot. Darn, that's not where I wanted to go. I want to be on this shot. I'm going to go and shot forward one shot. Notice my in and out points here. These blue bars are my in and out points. So this now limits this transport control to my in and out. I can't overshoot the shot. That's huge. All right, that all of a sudden makes this very much easier to use. So if my first action is to overshoot it, it just stops at the first frame of the shot. And now I can slowly kind of dial in where I want it to dial in. This also doubles as a timeline zoom. All right, right now we're framed up for all. So it's showing me the entire timeline. If I want to zoom this in, all I do is press the dot, and now it takes me out of the all state into its last remembered zoom state. And if I press the ring button, hold it, and now spin this, 
I can adjust my zoom level. <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. I use this all the time here in SpeedGrade. It's a fantastic little design element that I really, really like. And then I can press it timeline all mode. So I press it again and I'm back in my timeline all mode. There's one drawback to this element overall that I would say that I've run into no matter what app I'm using, it's that I'd really love some hash marks in here that let me know, you know, is it the third button or the fourth button down? It's easy to get lost. You know, clip right here. Is this, I think it's the fourth one. Maybe it's the third one. If I'm just glancing at it, if I haven't, don't have the muscle memory for this yet, uh, I'll very frequently hit, you know, clip right. I'll, I'll like, interpret this as being the third one down because it's the third row down. Even though I just had little dashes. You know, I don't need, you know, I don't need a grid, just dashes where it's empty so that I can, I can instinctively know how many rows down I need to go. All right, so there it is, a somewhat quick, relatively in-depth uh, look at how the speed, how SpeedGrade CC works with the Tangent Element Control Surface. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you some insights into if this surface is right for you uh, and how you might be able to grow into it. And uh, the next time we're going to take a look at this exact same surface working in DaVinci Resolve. So until then, I'm Patrick Inhofer from MixingLight.com. Thanks for watching.